Greetings, church family. Uh, it is my pleasure to share with you again today. I've been looking forward to this opportunity, and I missed last week uh, due to having to be in, out of town for a surgery on my daughter, and the Lord took care of her, looked out for her very specially, and I, I appreciate your prayers concerning that. Pastor JB is doing uh, better, uh, still a long way, and it's been a horrible struggle for he and Carletta. So continue to pray for those and other needs, but I was just updating you on, on my personal prayer request and uh, making you current. Also, what I would like to do is continue to talk about the uncomfortableness that we're facing in our world today. In so many ways, there's uncomfortableness all around us. Uh, we're uncomfortable with our terminology of what to say, uh, our usage of language, uh, how do we address people, how to how do we call people? We, don't, we, we are just really confused with much of that. And it's a tragedy because it's all distracting from what we ought to be talking about, what we ought to, ought to be saying, and we ought to be just sharing from our hearts one another. That's, uh, that's the Christian world and the non-Christian world, just sharing our persons. But instead, we're just fighting over terminology and verbiage and things of this nature, ridiculous stuff, in my opinion. However, I would like to I would like to just to continue to address the uncomfortableness that we've been discussing as we come back into church, as we address ourselves before the Lord, uh, or come before Him and address Him in our praise and worship. What are we expecting? Uh, how is it? And when we leave here every every Sunday, or you leave your uh, from around your Zoom and and you go out into the world and the community that week. What, what are you really expecting or what are you expressing to that world? And today I was thinking, or a couple of days ago, my mind came to me that when I was, uh, when I was uh, involved in a group of men, 144 to be exact, and we lived together for one solid year, and most of them were heavy, heavy drinkers and, and uh, a lot of drugs and, and everything you can imagine, uh, to try to keep themselves together or at least some semblance of it. And there I was, uh, me and a young man named Al Banks. And I wonder, uh, as, we, as I look back, uh, I began to take on a reputation. People began to look me up and, and uh, search out for me to talk. And I'm saying, why was that? Was it because I was like them? No. The answer to that, it was because I was very much not like them. So when the church today attempts to say, I want to be the light of God, I want to share the light of God, but I want, I want to be, we've got to become as much like the world as we can so that they will, we can be relevant to them. Uh, relevance is not, it, it is not that close to darkness. That's not what relevance is all about. Relevance is just simply a way to connect. And so who cares? what we would call it or how we would, how we would uh, disperse it out. Here's what really matters. Can they see a difference in the Christian community? Is there a difference in the Christian community? And is the Christian church making this terrible mistake of trying to become like the world as much as possible without becoming of the world or in the world? Is that, is that possibly what we're trying to do? I want to get as close to that border as I can, as close to that line. In reality, is not sanctification the very opposite, the very doctrine of sanctification? Isn't that quite the opposite? That we would come away from darkness, that we would come away from evil, and we, we depart from sin. It's not repentance about turning our back to sinfulness. Now we understand, we understand the light and darkness. We understand salt. We understand salt. We are the salt. He says the church, the body of Christ, you and I are the salt of the earth. And we understand that that earth needs the salt, needs the flavor. But if the flavor is contaminated to the point that it's mixed with something and it's almost like every other ingredient, then is it truly the salt that God wants it to be? The same with light. If light gets so involved into the world that you, you allow darkness to come in and not, and not make a difference in some way by engaging in the light, is, is cloudiness any better than darkness? 
I don't think so. And I think in our pursuit to become, to reach out, our pursuit to just say, oh, let's make a, let's make a new church. Let's make a, a new endeavor. And the book doesn't change. God's word is forever. I know there's uncomfortable things in the book of God. I know there's uncomfortable thoughts. When he says you must believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you must believe. He doesn't say that I suggest. He said you must. You can't do anything with that. You can't take that away or push this over here and say, well, that's not really what he meant. He said you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to become saved. My friend, those, those are issues that are so important and they make us uncomfortable. They make the world uncomfortable to hear those. We're almost uncomfortable to say them. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that Christendom, uh, there's certain uh, vernaculars and terms that we just pull right out of our, uh, uh, take away from our language because we're uncomfortable. We're uncomfortable. I want you to know that at the first at the first in that military scene in, in that foreign country, uh, I was a bit uncomfortable. I wondered how it would be. But as time went on, all of a sudden, I became the star. You know why I was became the star? Not because of me, my personality, nothing. I became the star because I was a light in a dark, dark scenario. And the beauty of that is darkness really, really seeks and desires, desires light. Now, if we take light and we confuse it, if, if, if I, we use our professors and we use our books and we use our politicians to make light, to, to bring light to the point that it's, it's gray or it's not really bright and, and then there's nothing for darkness to see, the Christian church must not become gray. It must be the bright light of God. It must be. And even though it makes people uncomfortable, our lifestyle that we talk about, that, that, that the word of God teaches us how to live a lifestyle. And if we just go the opposite or, or we don't pay attention to it, my friend, you're not helping. We, we're not helping God's cause. We're not helping redeem the earth because Jesus came and he died that all men might be saved and redeemed. And he needs us as the light of God. He needs the church to become more alive and more awake. We need to worry about being awakened, not woke. Who cares about, who cares as long as we treat people the way we're supposed to? Isn't that what God requires? We need to be worried about being awakened unto the spirit and let the light of God be brighter than ever. That'll touch people's lives. That'll change people's lives. In that military experience, many people, many people came to know Christ. Many people came for prayer, for family and so forth. Why? Because light was obvious. Light was obvious. So our goal can't be to make light look like or fit in with darkness. Light must be a contrast. It's a contrast to darkness. Salt is a contrast. It adds the flavor to the earth. And if we are not going to pay the price, if we're not going to be salty, if we're not going to have that relationship with God that enough so that it makes a difference, then we as a church and as a family, as a husband and wife, we're not going to make a difference as well. I think about my mother, the great difference she made is because it was obvious she was a woman of God, a person of God after God's own heart. There was such a contrast, such an uncomfortable, uncomfortableness. That's the reason my dad, who lived in sin for many years, he was very uncomfortable. He had to come home every night to a bright, shining light. I didn't understand that two years later. It's horrible for a man in sin that's trying to run from God to have to live with somebody who just, just offers up the greatest praise of God at all and honors God with all of her heart. Oh, my. I felt, as I look back on that, I felt sorry for him. My goodness. And that's the whole point. The light of God will make darkness uncomfortable and it becomes so uncomfortable, it will attack. It will attack. It will attack light. And so you, my friend, as Christians, the brighter you are, the more, sink, the more set apart you become, the greater your servanthood in Christ is. 
the greater that emphasis you that that em, that, that uh, emphasis you put upon the earth as being the light of God, the greater that is, the greater the attack will be upon you. So be be ready for some uncomfortableness. I think I think that this body of Christ is going to grow. I think I, I can see new people coming in. I see that we're about to do some dynamic things, but there's going to be uncomfortableness. If we're not careful, we're going we're to let this, this gray area of the world come in and try to change our mind. Listen, listen, my friend. Jesus is truth. His word is truth. He is perfect. I am imperfect. You're imperfect. He is the goal. He is the one that we're to become like, act like, and look alike. And that has to be the emphasis of our faith. As a church, as a fellowship group, as an individual, as a father, as a mother, as a teenager. Oh my goodness, it doesn't matter the age, it matters the maturity in Christ. We can get excited and turned on for Jesus Christ right now in this darkened world. Let the world be dark. I can't control that. I can only control my light as I surrender my will to God. I can only control my testimony, my emphasis on the earth. Lord, I have a purpose on the earth, don't you? I wake up every morning feeling the purpose of God is on my life and it just is exuberating. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Yes, the world would like to have me gone. I, I've wondered why so many Christians uh, have been taken away in, in this pandemic. Well, where does it come from? It comes from the enemy. And who is the light of God is the enemy. It's the enemy of Satan. It's the enemy of darkness. No wonder no wonder Christendom has taken a, a, a big hit. We'll have to look into that a little bit later. I think, uh, I think I've gone as long as I need to go with this session. I'll, I'll try to keep them short. I want to communicate with you. Oh, I love you. I love your church. I love your church family. Oh, my. Praise God. Father God, I pray your blessings. I pray God, touch, touch the body of Christ. Lord, just stir up our hearts, oh Lord. Stir up our hearts. And give us this burning desire inside to not settle, to not try to be like everybody, but to just realize that we are specifically special to the Lord. And we want to be your purpose, O oh God. We want to walk in the light of God and we just want to say, yes, Lord, direct me. Yes, Lord, here I am. Yes, Lord, here I am living my life in the middle of a dark world for Jesus Christ being the light of God. Bless you, folks. See you or hear you Sunday. Amen.